Anyone who's ever heard of the fan game Pokemon Reborn has probably heard something about its excruciating difficulty well above any of the Pokemon main series games. So I decided to make a little list of 7 pro tips that beginners to Pokemon Reborn should adhere to when trying to get into this game. And trust me, these will make your life a lot easier, especially because it's things that the game doesn't really tell you or that are not easy to come by on the forums. But having played through the game several times and having two separate LPs of the game, uh, I can tell you that these are some pro tips you want to adhere to if you want to make your life significantly easier in this already hard as balls game. And this especially applies to if you're playing the hardcore mod, which I definitely don't don't recommend for your first time. I might even just make a separate list on that mod of the game by itself, but for the base game of Pokemon Reborn up to episode 16, these are some guidelines that you should definitely consider. We're going to start off with probably the most important one, explore everything. By this I mean go everywhere even if it seems like it doesn't continue the story, talk to everybody, if there's a different weather that you haven't seen before, <laughs> look in all the places that you've been in before already again. This is so important because there's a bunch of things that you can miss by just running through the game uh, just to advance the story and nothing else and exploring none of the side quests and none of the NPCs or any of that. You can miss good, like most of the good Pokemon, I'll tell you right now, are from events and things that NPCs assign you, side quests, optional areas that you don't have to go to to actually advance the story. Uh, Pokemon that only appear at certain times of day or certain weather. Uh, if you skip through all of that and just kind of rush through the game, then you'll be missing a lot of good items, even some important TMs, and most of all, good quality Pokemon. One of the main challenges of Pokemon Reborn is that, especially in the early game, you don't have a lot of good options, and if you're just catching what's in the wild, then for the first few gyms besides your starter, you're mostly going to be catching absolute shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you really do need to explore every nook and cranny of this game, and I think you'll just get more enjoyment out of it overall than just playing straight through it. The second pro tip I have for you guys is mostly for beginner players, players who are just getting into fan games and haven't really played anything substantially harder than the main series Pokemon games, and if you're concerned about the notorious difficulty that Pokemon Reborn is known for, then the closest thing I can recommend to like an easy mode or a handicap for the game is definitely choosing Torchic as your starter Pokemon. Preferably a Torchic with speed boost, because everything in this game can come with hidden abilities, just normally. So Torchic is far and beyond the best starter Pokemon for this game. And the difficulty drop from using a Blaziken through your run of the game is very noticeable. Blaziken has amazing matchups, it has an amazing level up move pool, it can set up a bulk up, and a lot of its effectiveness comes from the amazing ability speed boost. And to me, Blaziken represents a crutch for beginner players that don't really get the gist of how to properly play this game compared to just an ordinary main series Pokemon game where you can just get the first six pieces of shit Pokemon you find and run through it just fine. So for beginner players that are more likely to make mistakes that'll cost them time later, Blaziken is definitely an effective crutch that will get you through major battles that you wouldn't otherwise be able to because you've made mistakes along your playthrough and haven't exactly raised a functional team. So if you're in doubt about whether you'll be able to handle the difficulty of Pokemon Reborn, go ahead and get yourself a Torchic to begin with. And I guess, okay, the first two were a, a bit obvious to anyone who's played Pokemon Reborn and know what the game is about, but now we're going to start getting to some of the more obscure pro tips that you definitely want to apply in your playing of the game. Mining. Okay, you remember mining from 4th gen? Yeah, it's in this game. Mining is your damn life, and honestly, it is outrageous that the mining kit is not a mandatory item, like it's optional. You can easily miss the mining kit if you're not really adhering to rule number one, the, the first pro tip, then yeah, you can miss the mining kit, and you get so much good shit from the mining kit. It is absolutely unbelievable. So, I'm going to go ahead and explain how you get the mining kit. So. You're going to come to a point in the game where a place called the Grand Staircase gets blown up. And after you get access to the HM Rock Smash, you can go back down there 
and access the top room that's being blocked off by boulders that you can use Rock Smash on. And there you'll find the Hiker with the Mining Kit. Uh, so if you don't backtrack that area, you can easily miss this important item. So why is the Mining Kit so good in this game? Well, you can get a bunch of important items from mining uh, rocks. First of all, areas where you can mine rocks, I mean, these like, the, the shining mineable rocks are everywhere in this game. Like, it's not like you have to go out of your way to go mining. And second of all, you can get some of the most important items in your playthrough, specifically heart scales. It's gonna be a while before you get the good rock in order to just fish a uh, love disc, which is, I'm sure, how most of you get hard scales in the main series games, but in addition to hard scales, which can be used for the movery learner as well as the Pokemon psychologist, which I'll elaborate on in a minute, you can also mine stuff like plates. Plates are, are just good items to have for your Pokemon to hold on to. It really kills me when I see Pokemon LPs, well, Pokemon Reborn LPs, and people just run through the game and their Pokemon don't have held items. Like, there's no reason for that when you can mine various plates and other boosting items from mining. You can also get shards, evolution items, and fossils, for example, that you can resurrect pretty early on in the game, like mid-game, I would say. The odd keystone is exclusive through mining, so you want a spirit tomb by the time you get to uh, Bisbean Wasteland. Then the only way you can get that is if you've been mining and you got a, a uh, odd keystone, that's what it's called. But mainly for hard scales which have extreme utility and plates which can boost a specific type of attack. And typically your Pokemon is not really holding on to anything else for most of the playthrough, so you may as well give them a boost to one type of their attacks. And I guess I might as well explain why hard scales are important. Not just for Move Tutor, there's also a place you can go to in 7th Street, which is a little bit later down in the game. Uh, there's a place called the Pokemon Psychologist, and he can actually change your Pokemon's natures for you. Now, you may think that's kind of trivial, but in the game like Pokemon Reborn, where the game is hard as shit, it might be worth your while to get beneficial natures for your Pokemon. And at the cost of one heart scale, like, it's, it's, not, it's worth your time to stock up on those and be mining every rock you see for those important items. And this brings me to the next pro tip. It is okay in this game to be picky about your IVs and natures. Now, I'm not talking about having a Pokemon with all 31 IVs and its best nature. That's not really what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that, especially, um, I guess the first instance of this is when you're choosing a starter, maybe maybe it's a good idea not to settle for the bold Torchic with zero attack IVs. Yeah, it, maybe not the best idea. Um, typically, the standard I use when picking out any Pokemon in general is like they, they need to have at least 10 IVs and all of its relevant stats and uh, not a shit nature. So neutral nature, I'll settle for that. Neutral nature and good IVs, yeah, I'll settle for that. In Pokemon Reborn, you can see all of your Pokemon's hidden values and they're there for a reason. It's for you to optimize them and make your life a hell of a lot easier when playing through this hard-ass game. So, there's no reason why you should be keeping the modest Makuhita with zero attack IVs. Go catch another one. You don't have to settle for the first one that you get. As long as it's something decent. We're not looking for anything competitive quality here. Again, my standard is, as long as it's not the worst nature for it, and it has at least 10 IVs in relevant stats, then we're good. And this definitely ties into what I said about the Pokemon Psychologist earlier, that you can trade a heart scale for changing your nature. It's little optimizations like that that you can make that will make your playthrough a lot easier and are not really time consuming at all. Another measure you can take is once you get enough department store stickers to access a certain floor in the Obsidian Ward department store, you can access the EV reducing berries. You know what I'm talking about, the, the Kelpsy berry, and Pomic Berry, stuff like that. The two most important berries there are the ones that reduce the attack EVs because for a lot of the Pokemon that you catch, they're really only going to be using one attacking stat. So for example, if you have a Magnezone, Magnezone's mostly a special attacker, right? But throughout most of your playthrough, it's pretty likely that Magnezone will be gathering a lot of attack EVs as well. So you can purchase those berries in order to reduce all of its attack EVs to zero and clear up those EVs for other stats, overall making your Magnezone stronger. 
by clearing up a lot of those effort values that it's not needing and putting it into other stats. So that's the kind of shit I'm talking about when I tell you to be a little bit more picky about your stats and hidden values in Pokemon Reborn than you would in a main series Pokemon game where you can definitely just let it slide and catch whatever garbage and catch and use whatever garbage that you find on the first try. It doesn't really work like that in Reborn. I mean you can but it's gonna make your life very very difficult. And speaking of making your life very difficult, the main challenge of Pokemon Reborn is its major battles, most notably the gym battles. It is absolutely notorious for having some of the most difficult gym battles in any fan game, any Pokemon game ever. Because of the field effects, the uh, all the gym leaders have six Pokemon, they have strong Pokemon, diverse Pokemon. But I'm gonna tell you something that I've been noticing more recently uh, as I've been playing through the game. If you're stuck on a gym battle, the answer is probably nearby. Probably the worst thing you can do when struggling against gym leaders is just taking them on head on every single time with the same party over and over again, not changing your strategy, not changing your Pokemon. I mean, that's really the type of thing that this game discourages the most, and you're just gonna have a bad time if you're waiting for luck to come your way and win the game for you. That's not really how this works. The game is trying to encourage you to try out a new strategy or perhaps catch another Pokemon to deal with the gym. And chances are the Pokemon that you need in order to beat the gym is right to nearby in the area you just passed. There's a few examples of this that I can conjure up. For example, one of the gym battles that is the most difficult in my opinion, Cory, he's a poison type gym leader. Guess what you can catch in the area right outside his gym? Fanfy. <laughs> a ground type, a pretty strong ground type. Uh, let's see, Charlotte. Charlotte's a, a gym that people bitch about so much when there's absolutely no reason why anybody should be struggling with her. She's a fire gym leader. And you know why you shouldn't be struggling with her? Because the area you just passed to get to the city where she's at is a cave system full of high level Rhyhorn, Rhydon, Bulldor, and Drudigon. Why are you struggling with Charlotte when you get access to all these Pokemon at high levels in the area you just went through? So unless so unless you're literally only sticking with the first six Pokemon you find, there's absolutely no reason why you should be struggling with most of these gym leaders. You, it's really just a matter of going out and looking for ways to win. That's all it's about. Another example, the second gym leader, Florinia. Probably the hardest thing about Florinia is her Credilly, which is... I mean, first of all, it's an evolved Pokemon at a very low level early in the game. Uh, and it's also very strong and has high stats and everything, but you know you know what you can catch in the areas right before Florinia in Obsidia Ward? You can catch both Pancham and Makuhita. Oh yeah, and Mankey too, so you get access to three strong fighting types right off the bat, and right before when you need them to fight Credilly. So it's just cases like that where you just have to be smart and look for solutions rather than just being lazy and stubborn and trying to luck your way through with a dysfunctional team. And that leads almost directly into the next pro tip, be prepared to train more than 6 Pokemon. Chances are you're not going to succeed a lot in this game or do very well if you're just going to be insistent on sticking with the first 6 Pokemon you find because first of all, the better Pokemon either come in events or they come later. So, if you're stubborn about having a set six, uh, a set team of six Pokemon from very early on, then chances are the team's not very good and you're not going to do well. And it's just a matter of you know, for certain gym battles, a balanced team might not always cut it. There's going to be a couple members of your balanced team that are inevitably going to turn out to be dead weight. For certain gym battles so if your grass type and steel type are part of your balanced team then guess what they're not going to be very useful against charlotte the fire gym leader so chances are you might want to temporarily replace them rotate them out for pokemon in the area that will be useful to you and if you start doing this early then eventually you'll have a plethora of pokemon to choose from for the later battles because you'll already have taken the time to train pokemon from the beginning so in addition to an A-team, it's okay to have an A-team of 6 Pokemon that you generally want to use for most of the game, but it's good to have a couple Pokemon in rotation at least. If you look through my Let's Play of both Pokemon Rejuvenation, a very similar game, 
and Pokemon Reborn, you'll find that I had several Pokemon on standby in rotation that I was actively training alongside my A-team. It may sound time consuming at first, but it definitely pays off later and saves you a lot of trouble. And the last pro tip for this game I have for you is something a little bit more minor, not really as fundamental as the other pro tips I gave about how to play the game, but uh, Amethyst really likes to go crazy with hidden items. They're everywhere, and by hidden items I mean invisible items that you need typically the item finder for, but basically I just take a habit, I make it a habit to just press A, mash A wherever I fucking go, if I see an isolated corner that looks suspicious, I go over and I press A. Uh, more often than not, I end up with a hidden item. Uh, press A on every little isolated rock you see in a corner. That's where Amethyst usually loves to put hidden items, and you can find some really good shit as hidden items, including evolution stones, extra supplies, gems, uh, stuff like that. So just make it a habit to assume that hidden items are in the area, typically again in corners, on isolated rocks, areas that are hard to get to but seem like nothing is there. Uh, sometimes Amethyst will troll you, I will warn you of that, that happened a couple times to me, but more often than not, it is worth your trouble to get to an area that's difficult to reach, even though it looks like nothing is there. So with that, that's all I'm going to leave you guys with, I hope you guys found this video somewhat informative, and <laughs> hopefully I helped you get through this sadomasochist adventure that is Pokemon Reborn.